Welcome folks, Nash Taters here with another wonderful video for War of the Visions. Today we're going to be covering the Mog Shop because the last time I did a video covering the shops, I completely forgot to actually cover the Mog Shop. So today we're going to cover the content for it. The Mog Shop is a shop designed for you to exchange the medals that you gain from this game doing various chores. The first thing we're going to talk about is the summoning medals. Now, when you summon every week, there's new units or new vision cards. And every time you do a temple, they give you 100 medals for that designated month. So currently we're on the May month. Every time you do a temple, they give you 100 medals and it's sent to your mailbox. Don't forget to retrieve it. I feel like this shop it's pretty much designed for whales or people who spend some money because the stuff is pretty expensive. For example, the Rainbow Fragments, 2000 So that means you need to summon 20 times. That's 40,000 gems. Most of us normal common folk who don't spend any money or little money are not going to be able to get those things. Rainbow Spheres, 1000 And really... I feel like this is designed for, Pete, for the whales to really finish off their unit that they're trying to get for that week and just get it to max limit break as fast as possible. Maybe alongside with the vision cards as well. So personally, I don't even really look at this very much. You got the ones for the vision cards. You got the one for the Miranda slash Whisper one. Moving on. Now for the media part of the show, we're going to talk about the friend shop, the arena shop, and the guild medal shop. Friend shop is basically medals that you gain by sending medals to your friends and vice versa. This is one of the shops where you can get really good items. The big one being the rainbow fragment of thought, which is limited to one per month. So as you can see, mine ends in one day. Some other things you may want to look at would be the expedition tickets. I personally don't really recommend it unless you just have a lot of friend medals laying around. Awakening materials. And then the big boy. I like this one a lot. The nameless hero memory. What it is 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 designed to replace the memory that's required for your unit. In your jobs. So as you can see, this is a mage memory. This is the blue version, which I believe is the second tier. The pink one we saw is the last tier, which is required to move from job 14 to 15. The pink items are some of the most hardest items to gain from this game. Because there's only two maps that allows you to get those items. So therefore, it's something to actually consider once you obtain the rainbow fragment of thought for that month and i'm going to explain to you why two maps did i mention there's only two maps yes two maps first map being the map that you will go to if you're using your own team and it is in the training chamber as you can see there's only two levels the level 70 one is the one that you want to go to. This is the only place you can get all these different pink stuff. And all of these different drops share with each other. So you need a total of five of these bad boys to go from job 14 to 15. And believe you and me, farming this is very tedious because it requires a lot of energy. 30 energy. You can do the multi version and it requires 18 energy. And my suggestion is just try to farm that every day. You know, try to farm as much as you can if you have a lot of time by trying to see if you can join someone else's room. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And even then it's tedious. And try to do it, take advantage of the 2x drop every time. Because believe you and me, it might take you weeks. It might even take you a month or so to get the spheres for those jobs for some of your characters. It is that tedious. 
So my recommendation for the French shop is Rainbow Fragment of Thought as your priority number one. Maybe some of the prisms and the fragments. And then don't worry about these because these unfortunately are not really needed that much. You're going to get the yellow ones pretty easily and then the pink ones you can get a bunch of actually a bunch of those when you farm. And alongside with the angel and the wyvern statues you'll get a bunch of those as well. It's just the memories that's hard. So my suggestion is try to get those by saving up as many friend manos as you can over time. And each month spend the 2000 for sure to get the rainbow fragment and then use the, any additional ones to get those. Because that replaces, it's like the joker in the deck. It replaces the friend, excuse me, it replaces the hero specific memory spheres. All right, moving on, arena. This is a shop where you don't need to buy a lot of things. In fact, you don't really need to buy anything at this point in my mind. Because most of the stuff you can get from quests, currently, they run quests almost every week. So you probably don't need any of those. The only thing I might recommend is the hammers. These hammers increase specific boosts. When you upgrade the equipment, there's a specific number of each stat. We'll, we'll do a quick look at it. Look at these. These are the specific stats on that equipment. So the HP, attack, magic, evade, accuracy, right? This is only specific for this equipment. And it's going to vary from equipment to equipment. Every time you upgrade the stars, which means you increase the level cap per, by 10 levels, and you're enhancing, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to hit max when you get to an end, I believe. So it's possible that when you reach max level, you may not fulfill the, the stats. I could be wrong. I'm not sure because I don't actually... I haven't really leveled anything max because the only thing that we all get for free is the Excalibur and you don't have to deal with any of that. It automatically maxes it out for you when you get to the level 30. It's possible, but I don't think that's the case because if that's the case where it's max, then why do you need these items, right? Logically speaking, it doesn't make any sense. Therefore, you could hit these hammers and what's that going to do is it's going to increase the accuracy for sure, by the required amount. It guarantees you to increase that. So what that means is by the time you hit maximum five-star equipment, it may never actually hit attack 162. So therefore, you might have to use one of these hammers to increase it. See, it increases it, right? But you're limited to how many number of hammers you can use per item. And so therefore, you must use the seals. I'm going to show you real quick. Actually, that's not a good idea. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do this one. See? When you do max, it allows you to put the seals in, which means it'll give you a possible boost in these numbers. It's still not a guarantee. So ultimately... No matter how much you boost, you still have a potential of not hitting max. So therefore, you might have to use the hammers. So that's something to keep in mind. So for arena tokens, medals, that's something I'll recommend maybe getting are the, not necessarily the seals, but maybe the hammers. And you only can get one per day per hammer for that specific boost and stats. So therefore, it's clearly the most expensive, but it may be the most worthwhile. These other refinements are not really worth getting because you can farm those through the events they run every week now. And maybe the re smithing hammer, which basically gets rid of everything in your equipment. It would reduce it back to nothing or zero because it says to reset your item equipment stats completely. I've been imagining you have to combo this with the hammers because as you're leveling your equipment, it may max out, let's say, purely your HP, but it didn't do much for your attack. So you may have to use the resmithing hammer to completely reset it and start over. That's, I, I don't know. Somebody needs to come in and make this video on guide on this because so far it's very complicated. I really don't like the equipment system in the game. But so far I haven't need to do any of that because you can pretty much beat all content without having to be min-maxing those. But my suggestion is, if you're not sure, 
Don't spend any at all. Just keep hoarding these medals for now. PvP medals. One of the most obnoxious system in the game is that you have to manually fight, fight your opponent. Unfortunately, the system of matching is terrible because it matches you against people who are much higher than you for some weird reason. All the times I've done it, as you can see, I've gotten zero. Every time I match, I'm a match against someone who's more superior than me, and they just pretty me, pretty much beat me down. I believe this system is catering to whales. I'm not 100% sure. I don't see too many people with these recipes. But the Hermes Sando is one of the better ones. It gives you a lot of agi as just the equipment. But you can pretty much get... Uh, I don't know. I think it's like one of those min-maxing things again. If you're a high tier whale, this is definitely considered fighting for. And it's super expensive, five grand. You have to be grinding that map for days. For me, it's a pretty valuable resource to spend my time on something else of the game. And I don't think one equipment is gonna make or break me, especially if I'm free to play. So it's not something I recommend people doing the PVP, but if you enjoy it, go for it, right? And getting these, uh, uh, the, the medals is just basically a bonus for you since you enjoy doing it anyways. Gill medal, again, you can get the Rainbow Fragment of Thought. You can get my favorite, Pink Sphere. And then, of course, you can get the items that boosts up your statue and level. These things clearly will boost up the statues by a lot more. Therefore, they're going to give you more medals. They're going to give you more experience on those statues. I think it's counterintuitive, the fact that we have to spend a lot of medals to buy something that gives us medals. But at the same time, it benefits your guild. So something maybe I'll recommend. But if you're short on medals, like most people probably would be, then I will concentrate getting on the rainbow first. Any subsequent ones, maybe get those. The soul medals and the vision medals are, like I said in my other video, it's, it's like the worst system in the game, basically. It's really bad. It's pretty much pointless. The idea is any extra shards you obtain once you max out your characters will be converted into the designated category shard equal to the rarity of your character. For example, this is the UR shop, which means you can use any max style unit any shards that you get additionally will be converted to metals that you can exchange for other UR units, shards, or these wonderful pink things. Uh, maybe this is where the whale is going to be spending their shards because you can tell you can get these things. But these things I can get fairly easily compared to this bad boy. This is the hardest thing to get in the game. I feel like this is catering to whales because they're going to spend a lot of money. Therefore, they're going to get tons of UR units, UR shards, and it's pretty much for them. For the rest of us, it's going to be the mega rares, the SR rares, the rares, and the normal. Again, counterintuitive because most of us, by several months into the game, are going to max out all of our MRs, perhaps, in terms of shards. Not necessarily building them, but we're going to have max amount of shards and once you have those shards they all get converted into metals which you can use to buy other things but i don't need these things anymore everything in these shops i can farm really easy you know super easy and think about it once i have shards for all these units then what am i buying in here nothing you're gonna get tons of these if you summon right and these also you also get these from quests and whatnot. So maybe maybe these would be the only thing I, I could think of buying. Why would I want to buy these? Because I already have all the units. So this is the stupidest, stupidest, stupidest system anyone has created on their team. And it's the only gripe I have about this team besides the PvP system. It's it's a terrible system. It's pretty much should be just removed because it's pretty much useless. Again, I think it's catering to the whales. It's the same concept for the vision cards. Total redundancy. So that's basically your mock shop. You know, you, you as a free-to-play player, friend shop, arena shop, guild shop should be really pretty much the only ones you concentrate on. And that's pretty much for frog mock shop, frog shop. Yes, I love frogs, but they don't have a shop for that yet. Anyways, hey, actually maybe they will, cause Chrono Trigger is a it's a really badass badass game. Maybe they'll bring frogs. 
Anyways, if you enjoy my video, feel free to subscribe. Also hit that notification button if you're a subscriber, which allow you access to my videos right away because it's notifying that a new video of mine has been put up. If you like my videos, go ahead and put a comment saying what you like about it. If you dislike it, same thing. I really ask you don't dislike my video, simply just click in the button and I can explain to me why you did not like about it. Tell me so I can improve myself. I'm here to, to, to for the long haul, I want to improve myself. That's my motto in life as well. You know, I have a thick skin, I can take any comments. I'm all good for that. Uh, remember, time your, is your most valuable resource. Use it wisely. Until next time, take care of yourself and your family.